Let's talk uh, briefly about uh, subcoracoid impingement. So this is defined as impingement uh, or pain from impingement of the subscapularis um, and the uh, and the lesser tuberosity against the coracoid. It's usually a combination of uh, repetitive positioning um, uh, combined with certain anatomic factors. It's not a common cause of shoulder pain at all. Uh, the uh, position of impingement is flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. And I see this actually in violin players uh, on their bow arm. So if you think of the position that the arm is in, uh, it's flexed, adducted, and internally rotated. If they do that repetitively and they have the anatomy that predisposes them to it, they can develop coracoid impingement. Uh, so the anatomy uh, that predisposes them to it is either a tight posterior capsule or a large coracoid process or both. Um, the coracoid, as we remember, is an important uh, a bony uh, uh, anatomic landmark. It serves as attachments for both muscles and ligaments, uh, specifically uh, the coracocubicular ligaments uh, and the coracohumeral and coracochromial ligaments. Um, the subscapularis tendon, as we remember, inserts onto the lesser tuberosity. The symptoms are very much anterior shoulder pain worsened by in various degrees of cross-body motion and flexion. Physical exam findings are tenderness over the coracoid, and you can usually recreate their pain at about 100 degrees of elevation. If you internally rotate and then adduct, um, you can, um, it will reproduce their anterior shoulder pain. Uh, imaging is very helpful. It can show decreased coracohumeral distance, and occasionally you can see some signs of chronic inflammation in the bone. So this is an MRI. Uh, the uh, thicker arrow here. Uh, shows a uh, it's axial image. Uh, there you can see some bright signal enhancement in the lesser tuberosity where the rotator cuff, where the subscapularis tendon attaches. Look at the limited distance between the uh, superficial side of the, of the lesser tuberosity and the deep side of the coracoid. Here, uh, this patient has a fairly prominent coracoid. If that distance is less than seven millimeters, it's felt to be a contributing factor to uh, coracoid impingement. Um, Again, these patients are fairly rare. You have to see a thousand shoulder patients to find three people with, uh, that truly have this diagnosis, but you should at least think about it. So findings on the MRI, you're looking for increased signal in the subscapularis and in the lesser tuberosity. Uh, the diagnosis is confirmed with an image-guided uh, uh, corticosteroid injection, which can be very therapeutic for them as well. Uh, the treatment is non-operative for most. You've worked, on, worked on posterior capsule stretching rotator cuff strengthening, uh, and activity modification. Uh, operative in, uh, interventions include uh, arthroscopic or, or, or open coracoid plasty. It's important to evaluate the rotator cuff at the same, at the same time to make sure uh, you're not missing a partial uh, tear of the subscapularis or a biceps tendon instability problem. Uh, coracoid plasty is actually fairly easy to do arthroscopically. and You just want to uh, remove some of the deep surface of the coracoid to improve the subcoracoid space. Indications for surgery are uh, basically uh, lack of response to conservative management. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.